Well, hopefully we have a potentially better Godzilla movie coming out later this year. But until we wait for this Godzilla movie to come out, let's talk about Godzilla the Planet Eater, which is the third and final film in the Godzilla anime trilogy, and picks up sometime after City on the Edge of Battle, where Mechagodzilla City has been completely destroyed, and then the aliens, well, the prettier looking aliens, inform our main character Haru of their god, Ghidorah, and they pretty much summon King Ghidorah from an alternate dimension to this dimension to try to take out Godzilla, but it turns out that they're sacrificing a lot of the humans in order for King Ghidorah to make his way to this dimension. Fuck this movie. Seriously. I... It's no secret that I have not been on board with this anime Godzilla trilogy. I have just been disappointed with every installment that has come. The first movie that came out, Godzilla Planet of the Monsters, I was excited for because a Godzilla anime that's really been taken seriously and not that weird kitty thing that we saw back then. So I was excited and the movie was just nothing but disappointing. Maybe the sequel will make room to improve. I mean, they teased Mechagodzilla, the sequel has to be better. And it was so not, because Mechagodzilla was nothing more than a giant city. Not only was nothing improved upon with the first movie, but they doubled down on all the stuff that was a problem in the first movie. Less Godzilla, more science talk. I don't think there was any level of excitement with this movie in terms of even Godzilla fans. Because this anime trilogy has just been nothing but one disappointment after another. And on top of all that, how do these things get worse? How is this the worst of the series? So like with the other reviews, I'm going to talk about spoilers. And at this point, I don't care. Like, this is something that you really do not need to see. Even if you are a Godzilla fan, this is something I don't recommend at all. So spoilers ahead. One thing that this movie actually does is throw away all the science talk from the first two movies because there's really not much else that they could talk about nonstop concerning a fictional science. But instead, they go the other direction, which is talk endlessly about religion and how King Ghidorah is their god and how Godzilla is a god in himself and something about Haruo being the chosen one. It's just so nonsensical that you really start to lose interest in what's going on because you've already got a bunch of boring and unlikable characters. I will say in this movie, however, that Godzilla is in it more than he is in the other two movies, so that's a big improvement right there. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, the King Ghidorah fight's got to be cool because you can't screw up King Ghidorah. I mean, they screwed up Mechagodzilla, sure, but King Ghidorah, they can't screw up, right? They gotta get it down. Like, the traditional golden dragon with three heads, two wings, giant wings, and two tails that shoots gravity beams. They gotta get that down, right? No. No. With Mechagodzilla, that was a situation of fool me once, shame on you. And then with King Ghidorah, this is a situation of fool me twice, shame on me. Although I gotta say, ever since I saw the first trailer for this movie and the poster, I knew immediately that that's not King Ghidorah. It doesn't even resemble what the character is. And with all the shit that Sony and Roland Emmerich got over redesigning Godzilla to the point where it doesn't even represent Godzilla, how is Toho okay with the directors of this movie just redesigning Mechagodzilla and King Ghidorah to the point where they don't even represent their original characters. Some people have argued that, oh, well, they show a little tiny sliver of King Ghidorah in his full body with the three heads attached to a body with wings and tails, so he's gonna show up in the movie. No, he doesn't. No, that whole big final battle that you see between Godzilla and King Ghidorah is nothing. It's just three giant serpents that Godzilla can't kill biting onto Godzilla as our characters constantly talk about how it's from another dimension and there's got to be a way to stop him, and all that's also intercut with these weird hallucinations or visions that Haruo has that the main alien character is showing him of his past, Godzilla's creation, a very pointless cameo by Mothra, like, I don't even know why she was even included in this movie. We knew she was the god of the natives in this movie, but they probably would have been better off to not show her. Because it is pretty much the equivalent of a Stan Lee cameo, rest in peace Stan Lee, where Mothra almost pretty much just walks by and goes, Hi, I'm Mothra, I'm here, and goodbye. I honestly don't know what else to say about this movie that 
doesn't sound like I'm beating a dead horse. Because honestly, what's bad about the first two movies is once again bad in this one, except doubled down even more. I will say though that when the movie got to its end, I was actually on board with it because it ends in a way where King Ghidorah is finally defeated. Haduro finds a way to kill the main alien who's somehow controlling King Ghidorah and by killing this alien, King Ghidorah is no longer invincible and Godzilla takes him out quickly. And then Haduro and the rest of the humans pretty much accept that they have to live in this new world with Godzilla. And for a while, it does kind of look like they're taking that route. But then it's ruined when Haduro just grabs his comatose girlfriend gets in a vulture, and pretty much does a kamikaze on Godzilla, killing himself and his girlfriend in the process. And we've seen how tough this Godzilla is, so Godzilla doesn't die, so what was the actual point? His goal was to try to kill Godzilla, but at the end of the movie, he learns to accept it. Why didn't he just continue to accept the fact that he has to coexist with Godzilla? Why did he have to go kamikaze? I hate this movie. I really hate this movie. It's not going to end up on my worst list of 2019 because technically this movie was released in 2018 in Japanese theaters, so it counts as a 2018 movie. But if I had to redo my bottom 10 list from last year, I would have replaced City on the Edge of Battle with this movie. And before I give my rating, the one key thing that really emphasizes how poor this trilogy has been handled was an interview with the directors in the Washington Post when this movie came out in Japan. So if you want to find this interview, go to the Gormaru Island Facebook page, and they posted the interview with the directors. But the two directors have said that they knew the movie was so different from other Godzilla movies that they would get bashed by the hardcore fans, and they said they welcomed it because it was an attempt to try to bring in a new audience. When you make a movie that's so radically different from the original source material in an attempt to get new audiences, you turn away new audiences because the new audiences who aren't familiar with Godzilla will go and look at people like me and ask, what do you see in this series? I don't get the love for Godzilla at all. So that's gonna turn away audiences completely. And they also said that they welcomed getting bashed by the hardcore fans because it proves that they made something different. Different does not mean good. You gotta separate the two things. I'm gonna give my rating for this movie right now. Don't waste your money. I'm not giving it burn in hell because I knew this wasn't probably going to be a very good movie because, again, each movie was made so close to each other that they couldn't learn from the mistakes of the previous one. So I had no hope for this movie. I wanted to like it, but I didn't have any hope. It has just been a gigantic failure that has ruined any potential for another Godzilla anime around the corner. Because these movies apparently did not do well in Japan financially, and money does talk. And if the money isn't there for this series, then Toho might not want to take the risk and make another Godzilla anime, even if it's being helmed by somebody who understands the property and gives us great monster action, while balanced with really interesting characters, or at least likable characters. So it really makes me curious what Toho's gonna do with Godzilla afterwards. Because right now we have Godzilla King of the Monsters coming out later this year, and then we have Godzilla vs. Kong coming out next year, but then after that there are really no plans from either Legendary or Toho. So it'll be interesting to see who moves next. It'll probably be Toho, and I'm curious to see what they're actually gonna do with Godzilla moving forward. Are they gonna go back to live action? Are they gonna do CGI like they did with Shin Godzilla? Are they gonna go back to Suitmation? I'll be very curious to see what Toho does, but in terms of the future of an animated Godzilla series in Japan, this movie and this entire trilogy just killed it all together. So there you go, that's my review for Godzilla Planet Eater, and my overall thoughts on the entire Godzilla trilogy. So now I want to hear what you guys have to say. If you've seen the movie, what did you think? Do you actually like this anime trilogy? If so, tell me why. I'm not criticizing you at all because you're entitled to your own opinion. I just want to see what you actually liked about this movie. What do you think works? So until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like and of course leave a comment. Don't forget to support my Patreon page. Follow me on social media. And until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one. Thank you.